The approximate time frame of this incident was between 1945 and the middle of 1950. At that time, his grandfather was around 22 or 23 years old. For those who have not heard the earlier stories of Sri Bash Das, it is worth mentioning again that he has been attracted to various supernatural and spiritual subjects since his teenage years. Whenever he heard of such matters in his village or nearby areas, he would immediately rush there to witness them. Those who heard the story of Brahmadatta, the jinn in the twelfth episode of Friday Special, may understand this context. After he reached a certain age, he started to take on a leadership role. Due to his constant mindset for justice, people from around ten villages would call upon him to settle various disputes. Many incidents had already occurred in his own life, and alongside that, due to his role in arbitration, he had opportunities to learn about many such unusual incidents and had witnessed many things with his own eyes. Now, the incident I will describe was recounted to him twice by his grandfather, Soumitra Roy. Anyway, let me get to the main incident. It was during the monsoon season, and as I mentioned, the time frame was between 1945 and 1950. For our listeners who live in the village, you may have some idea of what kind of rainfall occurred in the monsoon about 60 to 70 years ago. During the months of Ashar and Shraban, when the rains started heavily, they wouldn't stop for a week or even a week and a half. There was a saying in the village that people would say if it rained on a Tuesday, it would not stop until the next Tuesday. One such day, the sky was covered with dark clouds, and heavy rain began to fall. From the next day, the sky remained overcast, with rain sometimes easing and at other times pouring down. In the meantime, the villagers were managing to carry on with their activities, as most of the people in the village depended on agriculture for their livelihood, leaving little option to stay indoors. It was Thursday, the market day for several nearby villages. People usually crossed the river to go to the market in the village of Velaberia, which was known as the Canadian Market. The market was held only on that one day of the week, and villagers would buy various necessary items for the week. On that particular week, the rain had eased a bit by midday on market day, prompting everyone to head to the market, thinking they could return before the rain picked up again. However, by the afternoon, the rain gradually intensified to the point where visibility was reduced to just two or three hands distance. It could be said that everyone was stuck at the market for several hours due to the heavy rain. As the intensity of the rain began to lessen, evening approached. Once the rain eased, everyone slowly started to head home, each in their own way. In the neighboring village of Velaberia, there was an elderly man named Shumbu, who primarily worked in agriculture. My grandfather, especially our Shribas Das Dadu, knew him very well and called him Shumbu Kaka. On that day, Shribas Das Dadu had bought a very good quality hillsaw fish from the market. They had grown up in the village and knew a lot about it. However, while carrying the hillsaw fish home, there were often frightening incidents on the village roads. We had mentioned such incidents a long time ago, and he thought he would return home before evening since his hand was already finished. However, due to the rain, that didn't happen. When the rain stopped, he couldn't find anyone from his village among those waiting to go home. But there were two familiar faces from the Velaberia village. He thought he would go with them. The two from Velaberia planned to go to their respective homes after reaching Velaberia, and then he would continue the rest of the way alone. So, they set off from the market. After walking a little distance and crossing a stream, the two men began walking on the road to Velaberia. Upon reaching Velaberia, one by one, his companions bid him farewell and went to their own homes. By then, it had become quite dark, but since it was the rainy season and the sky was cloudy, the darkness was even denser than usual. Shambu Kaka, holding his market bag, reluctantly started walking alone along the village road. As he walked, he reached nearly the end of Velaberia village, and just a little further would lead to his village. This area is situated right in the middle of the two villages, 
and there are no houses along the nearby roads, just some bushes on either side, with ponds and various water bodies beside the road. He was lost in his thoughts when suddenly something strange caught his eye. About ten feet away from him, on a bamboo pond by the road, many small lights were glowing. He wondered what these lights were, as they were not on the road but on the pond. Curiously, he began to move closer. As he took a few more steps forward, the scene became clearer in front of him. He saw that almost eight to ten glowing fireballs were floating in the air, about four to five feet above the water. Now he felt a bit scared because until that moment, he hadn't thought of those distant lights as anything ghostly. He had heard about such lights many times from the elders during his childhood, but he had never seen them with his own eyes. He then realized that this was not something normal. He started to think about what to do now. At that moment, it was such that going back was not an option. The rain had lessened a bit, but it was hard to say whether it would increase again. The condition of the roads was very bad. You can imagine what the state of the dirt road would be like after rain. The thought of paved roads in the village was unimaginable. All the roads were dirt, and after rain, it became very difficult to travel through them. Shambu uncle thought that he could do one thing, since the fireballs were just hovering over the pond, if he quietly walked along one side of the road, there would be no problem. He wasn't going to disturb them, he would just pass silently along the side of the road. With this thought, he began to move slowly. As he advanced, he reached a point where just a few more steps would take him past the pond when suddenly a terrifying thing happened. The fireballs that had been swirling in the air abruptly stopped and stood still. It seemed that the fireballs had not noticed his presence until now, but now they had seen him, and suddenly they all turned to look at Shambu, who had also noticed them. Seeing this, he became very frightened. He felt as if the fireballs had come to a standstill just by seeing them, and an intense fear gripped him. He might have started to run, but he couldn't run very fast because the road was extremely muddy, and his bag was quite heavy. When he looked back, the level of his fear increased several notches as he saw the fireballs seemingly chasing after him. This sight made him lose all sense and he began to run even faster. At one point, while running, he entered the road to his house, shouting for everyone and trying to climb up from the low road. In that situation, he slipped in the muddy slush and fell, losing consciousness immediately. However, before he fell and lost consciousness, his family members had heard his cries and rushed outside. At that moment, the rain started to intensify again. They all helped carry Shambu uncle inside the house, but they didn't understand what had actually happened. A little while later, Shambu uncle regained consciousness. He felt physically very unwell, and everyone had the same question, what had happened? They surrounded him, asking what had happened. Meanwhile, hearing the commotion, some neighbors from nearby also came over. He tried to slowly explain what he had seen, and everyone present understood that he had been terribly frightened. The women of the house brought a pot of hot water. Then, in that region, they referred to a clay stove as Aka. They heated a sharp iron knife over the Aka fire and kept it in the water for a while before feeding that water to Shambu uncle. This is a method used in the village, and according to their belief, gradually Shambu uncle began to feel a bit more normal. At that moment, everyone was startled by the sudden scream of Shambu Kaka's wife from the kitchen, and the people in that direction rushed over. Back then, the kitchen was located a bit away from the main house, and it still is, but the kitchen in the village is still outside. So, when they arrived there, they saw that Shambu Kaka's wife and two other women were standing in the kitchen, screaming and shouting. In the light of the kerosene lamp, it was visible that Shambu Kaka's market bag was lying on the ground, and several vegetables had spilled out onto the floor. Everyone asked them why they were screaming, and they replied, look what's inside the bag. One person present took the bag in hand and looked inside, and immediately dropped the bag in fear, shouting, oh my god. 
Then, several others bravely took the bag and poured all the contents onto the ground. After pouring it out, it was seen that the various vegetables and green shambukaka had bought from the market were perfectly fine, but the two hillsaw fish he had purchased were terribly burnt and completely charred. Although the shape still resembled fish, if Shambukaka hadn't known they were Hilsa, no one would have been able to identify what kind of fish they were. Everyone present was stunned by this incident. An elderly man who was there said that Shambu had been chased by them while passing by a very dangerous pond. If he had left those fish behind, they might not have chased him at all, just like how fishers don't come forward asking for fish. However, if someone sees them coming and has any fish, especially if it is hillsaw fish, then they can leave it there and let them pass. They do not chase after them and do not cause any harm. Since Shambu uncle had run away with the fish, they chased him because he did not bring the fish to them. Since he left with the fish, they burned the fish from a distance with their terrible fire so that no one else could eat the fish. Since grandpa was elderly and knew a lot, Everyone present asked him what to do with the fish. He suggested cutting some banana leaves, wrapping the fish in them, and throwing them into the pond. Shambu uncle's garden was referred to as Chala there, so someone went and brought a banana leaf. After that, the fish were wrapped in the banana leaves and thrown into the pond. Shambu uncle was so frightened by this incident that he reportedly did not want to leave the house for several weeks unless it was absolutely necessary. And if he did go out, he would make sure to return home before sunset, while there was still daylight. However, it is said that nothing like this happened to him afterward. Then, on the Saturday of that week, which was the day after the incident with Shambu uncle, another incident occurred involving another villager named Ilias. Ilias primarily earned his living through agriculture. At that time, he had two children at home. About three or four days before this incident, news came that a close relative of his in Rajbari had fallen ill. Upon receiving this news, he went to see his relative. Since he worked in agriculture, he did not often visit relatives' homes throughout the year except for certain occasions. So, after all this time, he went to a relative's house. The people of that house were not letting him come easily, and after postponing for a few days, Saturday finally arrived. Additionally, since it had been raining for the past few days, he had also been a bit lax. Ultimately, he decided to return home on Saturday. It was pouring rain from Saturday morning, and he thought he would have a light meal in the morning and then set off for home. However, that did not happen. As the rain gradually decreased, it got quite late. When Elias reached the road in his area, it was already evening, almost night. He was walking along, and at one point, he reached the road bordering the village where Shambu uncle had been scared. It is worth mentioning that Elias had also been staying outside the village for three or four days, so he was unaware of what had happened to Shambu uncle. He was just walking along the road, with large bushes on both sides, and the condition of the road was completely terrible due to the continuous rain over the past few days. The dirt road had become completely unsuitable for walking. Since Elias worked in agriculture, he was thinking about whether the water would rise again this monsoon, which would cause him significant losses as the harvest was still pending. If he had stayed home these past few days, Everything might have been done in time, but work doesn't come just by saying it, and illness doesn't come with a warning either. That's why he had gone to his relative's house. While lost in these thoughts, Elias saw the same scene that Shambu uncle had seen on Thursday evening while returning from the market. From a distance, Elias noticed that the pond was several feet above the water level, with eight to ten fireballs floating and darting around. Seeing this, he was taken aback. Ilias became very frightened. A few years ago, he had once seen a fireball running back and forth across a field while guarding crops at night. However, he had never seen so many fireballs before. As he moved forward, he lost his courage and stood under a large tree by the roadside. He planned to wait quietly there since he was quite close to the village, 
until these things either stayed or moved away. Following his plan, he stood under the tree watching the fireballs. Their erratic movement was very unusual. At one point, Ilias realized that it had started to drizzle. He began to think about whether to move forward or stay where he was, but seeing the strange behavior of the fireballs, he felt too scared to advance. Gradually, the raindrops began to grow larger. Although he was standing under a big tree, rainwater was still falling on him. As the rain intensified, he noticed something strange, the fireballs, which had been moving erratically and chaotically until now, were slowly reducing their speed and becoming still. One by one, each fireball in the area came to a complete stop. Ilias was astonished to see how, even in this drizzling rain, the fireballs continued to burn in the same manner. They were burning so intensely that the surroundings became quite illuminated. In that light, the trees and bushes by the pond in the distance were clearly visible. Ilias had looked in that direction for a moment, he was scared and also surprised. At one point, Ilias noticed that as the rain had increased significantly, he was standing under a large tree and had started to get a bit wet. The rain had intensified, the leaves were soaked, and water was dripping from the leaves. However, if he stood below, even if the rain stopped, the water from the leaves would continue to fall, and he would still get wet. At that moment, he saw that the fireballs were gradually taking on a blue hue. Initially, they had the typical colors of fire, a mixture of reddish-orange. But as the rain increased, they slowly turned a deep blue. Then he noticed that when all the fireballs became completely blue, they arranged themselves in a circular formation, spinning rapidly while maintaining that circular shape. Ilias compared this phenomenon to the wheels of an ox cart, imagining how it would look if the wheels of an ox cart were made of fire and spun like that. These fireballs, while spinning in a circle, began to rise upwards. Ilias kept staring at them amidst the heavy rain as they ascended into the sky eventually disappearing beyond the horizon. After watching these things for a while, Ilias felt his fear somewhat diminish, he could sense that his heartbeat was stronger than usual. After all, such a sight is not something one encounters every day. Nevertheless, even after the fireballs vanished from his line of sight, Ilias stood there for quite some time. Because the rain was light, and walking in such rain is quite difficult, after waiting for about 15 to 20 minutes, when the rain eased, he started to walk. It was probably a little past 9 at night. As he entered the village road, he suddenly felt a dizziness in his head. For a moment, he thought he had lost all his strength and wondered if he would ever be able to go home. It felt like he might never be able to return outside again, that he would faint and die right there. This feeling is somewhat like when a person feels a light shock, and their head spins, making their body feel weak. From the spot where he was feeling this way, it was only a four to five minute walk to his house. But feeling unwell, he decided to go to a neighbor's house. His neighbor's name was Harapada, and his house was nearby. He quickly went to Harapada's house and started calling out to them. By that time, Harapada and his family had already fallen asleep, as villagers tend to sleep early. However, hearing the noise at the door, Harapada and his wife woke up. She heard Elias calling from outside and then woke her husband. After that, they opened the door and brought Elias inside, asking what had happened. Elias explained everything, and then Harapada said that it was not safe for him to come down that road at such a late hour especially since he hadn't been in the area for a few days and didn't know what had happened. After that, Harapada detailed the incident to Elias regarding Shambukaka. Then Ilias said, I was also very scared when I first saw it, but after watching for a long time, my fear gradually lessened, becoming somewhat bearable. Suddenly, when I entered the village road, it felt like darkness rose in my head, and I thought I might faint. At that moment, I saw that your house was the closest, so I bothered you. Harapada then said, Oh, what's there to be bothered about? We are villagers, 
it's our duty to stand by each other in times of trouble. Come, I'll take you home. After that, Harapada accompanied Ilias to his house. When Ilias's family members heard about this incident, they too became quite scared and a bit worried. Ilias reassured them, saying, there's nothing to worry about. Tomorrow morning, I'll just get some chanting done by the healer, and everything will be fine. After that, everyone went to sleep, but in the middle of the night, Ilias developed a high fever. As dawn broke, he was taken to the healer. The healer always says that this light is a very mysterious thing, and understanding their various activities is not very easy, based on the description Ilias provided. Hearing that, it seems that time was a special moment for them. Since Elias saw them from a distance at that moment, it had a negative impact on his body. He was advised to take a few days of rest, and some methods were taught to him along with some oil. Elias had gone there with several members of his family and neighbors, and they asked the healer what the solution was, as that day Shambu was scared again. Elias also became ill after witnessing these events, and it seemed that no measures could be taken to make these things go away. The healer then said that you are considering the matter to be as simple as it seems, but it is not that easy. You are ordinary people, and I have been a healer for many years, yet I have not been able to learn much about them. However, I believe this problem will not last much longer because I heard from my master that they do not stay in one place for long. So, you do not need to worry too much about this matter, and perhaps they will stay for a few more nights. It would be better if you do not travel on that road at night unless it is absolutely necessary. After that, everyone left the healer's house. Elias reportedly had a high fever for almost a week after that incident, and his body became weak. At night, whenever he went to drink water, he felt as if he was drinking hot water, even though the water was normal. Thanks to the tireless efforts of his family members, the endless mercy of Allah, and the regular application of the oil and other methods provided by the healer, Elias gradually recovered. 